when that spirit, that conscious freedom that lies dormant in you wakes up, which means it becomes conscious, that's what awakening is. So in that which is dormant in you. So within, within everybody, there lies dormant uh, spirit. The Buddhists would call it Buddha nature. The Advaitists would call it um, consciousness. But there lies within everybody that. And spirituality is about bringing it from a state of dormancy, a sleepness, non-awareness of it, to sort to wake it up. Because this is this is this is the odd thing about spiritual awakening is it's not your idea of yourself that wakes up. It's the odd thing about it. You know, there you are going around trying to make something happen. Do you know? whatever it is, or trying to find God, or you're trying to be enlightened, or you're trying to wake up, and your, little, your idea of you is struggling, sometimes very ardently, sometimes it sort of uh, takes a break. <laughs> but, but the odd thing about spiritual awakening is, is the thing that wakes up is not the thing that's searching. The thing that's searching is just our idea about ourselves. That's all that's doing the searching, our idea of ourselves. Because our, our, our idea of ourselves, within it is a, a constant state of insufficiency. In some people it's very overt. In some people walk around in their lives feeling very, very obviously insufficient. You know? And then other people it's sort of very hidden. You know, their, their, their insufficiency is, is well disguised. They may not even know they have it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I remember, I, it's just something I observed many, many, many years ago when I was in, in athletics. And I realized um, that people who, are, who excel greatly, you know the kind of people that you watch on TV or win gold medals in the Olympics or do all that kind of stuff, they seem to have this very, very sufficient sense of self, you know, especially when they're standing on the podium and everybody's cheering for them and they look so happy and, you know, their whole life has come together in that moment and everything seems so sufficient. Well, I can tell you from being, from being one of them <laughs> and from being around them earlier in my life that actually, even though it looks one way, that actually a lot of what propels that kind of activity is a sense of insufficiency on some level, right? So to an athlete, if they get across the line, they feel very good about themselves. Their sense of insufficiency has been temporarily abated, right? It's been satisfied. Oh, I'm worthwhile. I beat somebody else across an arbitrary line in the sand, right? Good for me. I feel good about myself. I'm worthy. It's a funny thing that can make egos feel worthy, isn't it? Right? You can cross a little line in the street faster than somebody else, and your ego can go, oh, I feel good about myself. Right? Other egos are doing something else to be sufficient, right? We look through sufficiency through finding someone who will love us and will be sufficient, feel sufficient, succeeding in your job. Maybe the desire that having a family will make you feel sufficient. And all these things can make one feel sufficient in a relative way. But it's really this it's, it's insufficiency that's on a spiritual search, right? That's what's on the spiritual search. That's what's doing the seeking. That's what's trying to go from here to there. Right? And if I get there, then I will be totally sufficient. Mm -hmm. 
the strange thing is, though, is the more you run towards sufficiency, the farther it seems to be away. It's, it's like a carrot that's attached to your nose. You know, it, it may seem very, very close at hand, but uh, alas, one never quite arrives. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's the odd thing about our own awakening, is the thing that wanted to be sufficient, the thing that wanted to be enlightened, the me that wanted to arrive there and find God or whatever, that, that's, that's not the thing that wakes up. It's that thing within you that's dormant that wakes up. Whatever you want to call that, because it's, it's difficult to call it something. That's why we come up with strange words like spirit and consciousness and Buddha nature. And it's all words for something within you that, is, that in most human beings lies dormant at times, at times in almost everyone, it gets very close to the surface. Maybe it peeks through a little bit into consciousness for a moment. And usually people that are involved in some deep form of spirituality, it's because that which lie dormant has at times sort of broken through the surface of consciousness enough. Just enough to where you know there's something there. Right? You know there's something there. There's something in you. There's something there more than if just the familiar everyday sense of self. I would imagine almost everybody in this room, in their own way, some in very powerful ways and some in very, very small ways, has had this, this thing this spirit that generally lies dormant, at times just rise above the surface a bit and make itself known in some way. As I said, it may have been a big way, it may have been just a little way. But it's always the nature of this is so compelling, so enticing, that once it breaks through the surface for a moment, you're done. You're done. You're, you're, how can we say it? Uh, <laughs> we'll just stick with you're done. I could come up with more colorful language, but. You're done for, because once it's broken through that surface of consciousness, if even for a moment, you'll be compelled right? with or without your consent, right? Um, for or against your own will, what you want. You'll be so compelled by this, by this, by these little moments of something becoming a bit awake in you that you won't really be able to entirely forget it. And that's a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, what comes with that usually is, of course, one's own makeup, your own, your, your sense of self, your me, thinks it has a very vital role to play in all this. It thinks, I can, I can do this. I can, I can find this thing that, that came sort of out of nowhere. You see, when it arises into consciousness, it kind of comes out of nowhere. Spontaneously, something breaks through in your consciousness and it's, it has a sense of something very, very new and, and fresh and alive. And your me thinks, I can, I can find that again. I can duplicate that. Or worse than that, I can be that. You know?